the other thing that we need to figure out is why do we have to do a dynamic simulation, right? Why don't we do like a steady state simulation? Well, the answer to that question is in crashworthiness, the process is highly dynamic. So if you just take 120 milliseconds, that is in 0.1 seconds, these are the things that can happen, right? In t equal to zero, the bumper contacts the barrier, which means your friend bumper hits the barrier. Okay, in 30 milliseconds, your friend ca crash sensor is activated. In 17 milliseconds, your airbag is deployed. Okay, so very, very fast. Okay, and in 50 milliseconds, you are going to contact the airbag. And then in eight, about 80 milliseconds, the car is going to, um, so not the car, uh, in 80 milliseconds, the airbag is going to deflate. So that is going to basically reduce the impact. And then in this time, in this uh, same time, your seat belts, your seat belts also tighten up, which is an important safety feature because that actually pulls you back, all right? So the next thing that we're going to be talking about the, is the load path. So the load path is extremely important, okay? Now, why is it important? Because the load path helps us to channelize the energy away from the passenger. So for example, here, I think that if you look at the frontal impact load paths, you actually can divide this into three zones. So there's a front energy absorption area, the middle energy absorption area, and the rear energy absorption area, okay? And then your structures in your car, okay? Your structures in your car basically uh, take up the energy and dissipate it away from the passenger. And this is what is called as the impact load paths. So 100% energy comes in through the bumper, 20% goes top, 60% goes in the middle, and 20% goes in the bottom. And then any energy that comes from there, you can see that the split is again done away from the passengers towards the lower end of the car. Okay, so this is this proposed design actually helps save the passengers and the driver. Okay, but it might not work always, right? This happens when only when the barrier is right up front. That is, for example, if you're rear-ending a car, this these these load paths are perfectly valid. Now, if your car is slightly a bit inclined, then then these might not hold very good, and that is why there's only a, a few limited number of test cases where the designs would hold up. You can, you can even, for example, even if you're traveling at 30 kilometers per hour, if you hit the, if you get hit in a weird angle, you, the, the crash can still be fatal. Now, in, with respect to technologies, whatever you're seeing in market, you know, nowadays people have airbags, not only in the steering wheels, the, on the passenger side, you have airbags in the rear, um, you have curtain airbags that pop from the side, you have airbags in your seat belt, whatever, right? So there are so many different types of restaurant technology. Some of them are standard because in certain countries, while some of them are more treated as a, as a luxury or, or as a premium feature. With respect to softwares, for example, you as a student, I feel like at an undergraduate level, you know, this is the type of uh, projects that you need to be focusing on where you actually use modern computer programs uh, to basically perform crash analysis on your own. This is the type of projects that industry expects from you, and this is the type of projects you need to focus on. So HyperMesh, as you know, is a preprocessor. So HyperMesh basically takes the CAD model and it converts that into finite element mesh. Basically, it creates the nodes that we talked about. All right. Now, in these nodes, the equations are being solved. So it's very important that nodes should be created correctly, and in in areas that in areas where deformation happens very quickly because the material has lower strength you need to have more number of node parts to capture that. Okay, so this is the whole point of hypermeshes. Okay, because hypermesh is a meshing software, it can mesh regions accordingly. And then as an engineer, you basically provide input on where the mesh needs to be finer or where the mesh needs to be coarser. Obviously with more number of mesh points, it's going to be more accurate, but it's going to take more time as well. How energy is dissipated through car structures? So if you're asking about the physics, right, at the end of the day, it's about rigidity. So, and it's called as shortest path to resistance. So for example, uh, you can think of it like this. Uh, if, you, if you, for example, if you drop an egg down, it's just going to break because the entire shell is going to take that energy from you. On the other hand, you take the egg and then you put that in a metal cage, 
okay and you put that in a metal cage and say that the egg is being suspended in the middle okay by rubber bands so what's going to happen is the rubber bands are much more elastic when there's an impact it's going to release the energy by the rubber band moving left and right or whatever direction and because of that the energy is getting dissipated and typically when there's a solid structure it's very easy to dissipate energy through it so it will take the it will take the energy very easy so that's why what you are doing is when impact is taking place you are designing your frames your frames in your car that is a very rigid component okay it, which means it's not flexible that takes the maximum energy and that takes most of the energy away from the passenger and it takes it through the underbody okay uh, we have another question how much g value can we sustain in car please let me know well uh, i don't know the answer to that question to be honest i can look it up and let you know uh, because here here in crash course you know people typically don't look at g values because what can be fatal to you is not the g value but it's the impact mm -hmm.